hoop dreams. Unfortunately, I gave mine up when I was 10 years old. I decided that it was better if I actually picked up this microphone and talked about the game of basketball instead of playing it in front of it. Tonight was an absolute party inside of Phillips Arena at the Hawks game. We had Young Jeezy, the post-game party, the DJ listening party. It was amazing. It was truly, truly amazing. See, I told you it was a party. Today, the Georgia Tech Yellow Jackets simply just stumped all over the UNC Tar Heels. As you see the final score behind me, 33-7. to Cavrante Benson had 130 yards. A couple of weeks ago, the Miami Dolphins decided to instill a team rule to where if you wanted to protest the anthem, you couldn't be out on the field. So the three players came out with one solution, and that was just to simply stand in the tunnel for the anthem. Well, obviously, you can see I'm just a little more relaxed than I usually am, and that's because... It's always a little more casual when you come back home, and that was the case tonight for Dwight Howard. I'll maybe have to save a treat for Sunday when I get home. Right. <laughs> Do you have it in mind? Do you know what you're going to eat on Sunday when you get home? Maybe go get some ice cream. You liking it compared to Bucket? Yeah, who are you with? <laughs> uh, we went the passion here. On the way to 10 wins in a row, what did he call those shoes? Uh, <laughs> I don't have a name for him just yet. You know, I, I at least had an opportunity to kind of calm down, cool down, shower and everything before I went home and made up a name for him. So uh, <laughs> give me that. And in the last couple minutes, Dwight made sure that he left a little gift for his old teammates. I had my eyes closed and uh, I opened them back up when it was time for the free throws. So, uh, you know, I just gave Moose some love, you know. Uh, that's my guy. I didn't mean to do it to him, but uh, he was in the way, took me in the rim. And uh, I couldn't go around him, so I had to go over the top. Of him. So, Moose, if you ever watched this man from the bottom of my heart, man. Tonight was an absolute party inside of Phillips Arena at the Hawks game. We had Young Jeezy, the post-game party, the DJ listening party. It was amazing. It was truly, truly amazing. See, I told you it was a party. <laughs> I wasn't expecting it to actually be this cool and like I met a lot of like cool people from school that I never even like met before so it was fun. The Hawks did an amazing job tonight putting us all together, getting the fans actively involved in tonight's game. Halftime was great. This listening party that Jeezy put on at the end was amazing. I mean, the atmosphere was really, really dope. They, can, they need to continue to do more like this to basically get the community, find a way to bridge the community, music, and sports. That, they got a good blueprint so far, so they did an amazing job tonight. So. But does one fun night necessarily equal to more future trips to Hawks games? I am definitely going to another Hawks game sometime soon. So probably before the season's over, I'm probably definitely going to be at another one. It made me really feel like I got my money's worth when I purchased my course side tickets. It really made me feel like I got my money's worth with this private party at the Jeezy. Like, if y'all don't go get pressure after this, y'all crazy. From Atlanta, Georgia, and for Rolling Out Magazine, I'm Rashad Milligan. This past Saturday, the Kennesaw State Owls moved to 6-1 and one on the young season after defeating Garner-Webb 17-3. Kennesaw State is just like any other early FCS program in only its third season of existence. The Owls are still trying to set a tradition and culture here in Georgia. But tonight at its homecoming game, the main story of the night went way beyond the football field. They're like they're annoyed right so like it's a it's a perfect instance of just like certain people are annoyed of our existence but we're not going to move we're not going to budge so that that's the kind of tension that we have right now so just like people are annoyed but we're not they're not gonna be changed if we keep being silent the campus-wide tension started a couple weeks ago when five black kennesaw state cheerleaders decided to kneel during the national anthem According to local reports, Cobb County Sheriff Neil Warren and State Representative Earl Earnhardt opposed the protest. Earnhardt determines the funding Kennesaw State receives on a year-to-year -year basis. 
The university has since decided to keep the cheerleaders off the field during the anthem, so a group of students and faculty now just show up to the games in support of the protest efforts. I don't think that they should be uh, stopped from making their statements or, or protesting, but, but really people need to realize that there'd be no protests happening if it wasn't for this outrageous police brutality. Having everyone tell us, like I said before, that they support us really, really means a lot. And having so many people come out and actually take a stand with us when, we, when we're being put in the back and we can't do anything, like we really appreciate that. We definitely feel as though um, it put meaning to what we did. So all of the, um, the protests and stuff that have come from it, then that means that our point like, got across and our voices were heard. Like, it took Rosa Parks to sit down for people to stand up. In the last two months, Kennesaw citizens have fought to remove a Confederate flag, and Cobb County Lieutenant Greg Abbott retired after joking that officers only kill black people with a woman pulled over for a DUI. The cheerleaders are still shocked by the coverage their protest has received. Um, we didn't think we were going to get that much attention. Not, yeah, we, we thought maybe on a local level, but we didn't know it was going to get national. Yeah. But we definitely are glad that we did because we wanted to use our platforms to make sure that our voices were heard. So to see so many people recognizing this act, then we really feel as though our voices are being heard. Some have even gone as far as calling the group the Kennesaw Five. <laughs> that name definitely put some power to it. Yeah. I feel like yeah. it's something that will be remembered in history. I love yeah. the love that we're getting from it. Yeah, yeah me too. From Kennesaw State, and for rolling out, I'm Rashad Milligan. We now have a new champion in the world of HBCU college football. North Carolina A&T won a thriller here in Atlanta, Georgia, inside of Mercedes-Benz Stadium, 21 to 14. Don't believe me? Just watch the highlights. All right, so we're going to start it off in the second quarter. Can A&T be the first ones to get on the board? No, there's a pick there. From Lamar Raynard, Grambling's first possession after that turns into a fumble. So back-to-back -back turnovers for Grambling State and A&T as the A&T fan is yelling at me. They don't want it, whatever that means. Yeah, so you see Lamar Raynard comes back, and I ask the question again, can A&T be the first ones to get on the board? There's a first down pass right there. Now he drops it off to Marquel Cartwright, who's replacing the Bears rookie right now. Tariq Cohen, the Aggies are the first ones on the board, 7-0. Let the Q stroll. Yeah, throw them hooks up. Okay, there we go. So here comes Grambling State trying to answer back as they get a first down and some more here shortly before halftime. Now Devontae Kincaid, you just saw him do it with his arm. He's doing it with his legs now. The former Ole Miss quarterback in 2018 NFL draft prospect getting it done. Grambling State Tigers driving up the field shortly before halftime. Another hesitate. Oh, he broke his ankles inside the five yard line. Here comes Grambling State in the triple option formation. And he drops it off for the easy touchdown. Tie game 7 7. Let the fans have it. All right, so we're going to skip ahead to the fourth quarter after both teams exchange scores in the third quarter. There you go, Dink Kincaid with the first down pass, but it didn't turn out to be much. A&T now. Cartwright with the nice run. He ran so hard <laughs> that he actually hurt a Grambling State defender, but he was all right. He threw up both thumbs when he got up. A&T with another interception from Reynard, this time with a little over two minutes left. Can the Aggies bounce back from this? We'll see. Grambling State, short offensive possession, three and out, 30 seconds later, they're punting to A&T. So what can they do now? Can they redeem themselves from the prior turnover? Cartwright fumble, another turnover. Grambling State running it back. These guys are in scoring position. They have all the momentum in the world, but let's look not so fast, because Cartwright never really had possession of the ball. NT gets a godsend, another chance. First down right there for the Aggies. And they're driving, tick, 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 tick. That clock is ticking. 
130. Let's see what Reynard can do right here. A little dump off to Cartwright, who gets another first down. As we look at that clock, tick, 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 tick. A great catch for the Aggies right there inside the five-yard line. They're in scoring position. Cartwright gets stopped after a couple yards, but he helps to push in Reynard for the QB sneak and the go-ahead score, 21 to 14. Aggies on top. Now here we go with the squib kick to kill some of the clock after Gremlin State fumbles the ball, they pick it up. And now they only have about 50 seconds left. So can Devontae Kincaid, the best quarterback, can sound in black college football make something happen? He's a clock manager as they go out of bounds right there, 22 seconds left. Another quick out of bounds first down. 17 seconds left and one more for the books so 14 seconds left they have enough time for two more plays here's a shot to the end zone just missed it so here we go last possession of the game Devonte kincaid his last game as a college football player can he make something happen he goes incomplete aggies win 21 to 14. he turned us over in the red zone we turned them over um we they just stopped us one more time than we did. I really wanted to win another championship my last year. I wanted to go out with another championship. And plus, I wanted my teammates to have. Just, I felt like that was going to stem me from leaving. That's my little goal right there. That was my plan. But, you know, God had different plans. So, when I was standing there, man, it was really, it was, it was overwhelming because my college career really over. Now, this now championships are won. And we're able to go down the score, put ball in zone. And in the season 12 and 0, which is an unbelievable feeling. 12 and 0 was great, man. I want to, uh, I want to thank all the fans. You know, you, when you looked at our, uh, on our side, man, our side was packed out. So I appreciate all the fans uh, for my uh, first and foremost for coming out and supporting us. And you know, we had ups and downs during the game, but you know, we held on, man. And that's the beauty about this team. Man. We, we fighters. We're fighters.